What we're going to look at today are the geometric elements of the soft gauge. And of course, those are based upon fundamental geometric principles. Uh, hopefully, a lot of this will be review. How are we going to represent these geometric elements, the lines, the circles, and so forth, that have to be used in the soft gauge? And then what are the important properties of these elements that ultimately will relate to our set of points that we talked about last time. Well, of course, we have to begin with the coordinate system if we're talking about our geometry here. And the basics of our coordinate system will be, of course, x, y, and z. And representing our points that we collect on the surface as a uh, coordinate in that system. Now, we don't have to worry about this absolute origin for right now. What we're really concerned about is the data that we collect on, on the individual points. We can take that point and represent it as a vector, and then we can use that vector in a variety of operations. As you know, for a vector, if we want to find the distance, what we're going to take are all the elements of the vector and square them and then add them up, and our notation for the magnitude of the vector are the uh, two vertical bars there. So as you can see, if I've got just uh, one coordinate value here, then it's very easy to calculate that versus an x, y, uh, and the principle is still the same. We take the individual values, square them, and add them up, and that gives us the length of that vector. The dot product is an important uh, operation that's performed between two vectors. And here what we're going to do is add up the individual x, y, and z components. The way we do that is um, multiply the product of the x's, the y's, and the z's, add them up, and that gives us the dot product. So as you can see here, I've got two vectors, a and b. a dot b gives me this equation here. And then depending upon the operation that I want to perform, I can use that result. Note that the result of a dot product is always a scalar. In other words, it's a numeric value versus a vector. The unit vector is important because that tells us something about the direction of or orientation of a particular element. The, by definition, of course, the length of the unit vector is 1. In order to find the unit vector corresponding to any vector v, so if you give me a vector of any uh, size and location and orientation, I just divide through by the distance, and that gives me the uh, result of a unit vector. As you can see here, I've got a vector v that has been normalized to u, and I can move a distance by just taking that unit vector and multiplying by a scalar. Right? So this is my scalar or scale factor and now I can create any vector in the same orientation as u, uh, not position but orientation by multiplying by a scalar. Of course the important unit vectors related to your coordinate system are the i, j, k which as you can see here correspond to the individual axes of the coordinate system. The dot product is used to determine the angle between vectors. So uh, if we're not using trigonometric relationships here, uh, we can take the two vectors <coughs> and use the cosine rule, as you can see here. So we understand that uh, the relationship between the sides and our angle theta looks like this. And then we can uh, simplify that and end up with our expression here based upon the individual elements of the vectors. So you should recognize, of course, a dot b, left hand side here, and right now we're just looking at the uh, a triangle in the xy plane, uh, but it could be two vectors in uh, any orientation. So I'll take the dot product of the two vectors, and then I will take the magnitude of those vectors times the cosine of theta. So I have the identity here, which means I can rearrange my equation and solve for theta being the inverse cosine 
of a dot b. Now note here, if b and a are unit vectors, then it's just going to be the inverse cosine of a dot b. The cross product is important. We've already seen uses for that previously. Here we find a perpendicular vector to two other vectors. What happens when the two vectors are parallel to each other? Well, then the cross product is undefined because really there are an infinite number of vectors that will be perpendicular to both of those. So we have to have uh, two vectors with, with slightly different orientation. And then we take the dot product to calculate the x-coordinate, y-coordinate, and the z-coordinate. Now, you can uh, take that cross product with the uh, complete uh, set of vectors. But by partitioning it here, then you can see the determinant is very simple. And we only have to uh, find the difference between these two diagonals. And that makes your calculation a little bit easier. Don't forget, you can only do this if they are not parallel to each other. So here's an example. I'll take the unit vectors corresponding to the x and y axes. And as we saw, those would look like this. I'll take the cross product of these, which ideally right, should give us the z-axis. I calculate my determinants for the x, y, z coordinate. And uh, clearly, as you can see here, we end up with the k vector, the unit vector for the z-axis. So that's consistent with what we expected. Well, now that we understand that some of the basics of the individual points, let's think about locating a geometry with respect to a coordinate system, because ultimately when we create our soft gauge, that will be of interest. We'll be looking at point, line, and plane, because we've already seen the usefulness of that in terms of orientation and position. First of all, the point is the easiest, and that is just the vector itself. We know exactly where it's located with respect to the origin. And then we have a line, and we're going to represent a line here as a parametric line. The reason for that is many of the operations we perform are, are uh, easier to compute if we represent it as this parametric line, which you may have not seen before. Essentially, what we're doing is defining three equations here, but we'll do it in vector form to simplify it. Here's our point. This is a point on the line. And then this point here, x0, y0, z0, as you can see here, is really an arbitrary point. Now, we can select which point we want to use, but it's some other point on the line. And then we have f, g, and h. This is an important vector. This vector is our direction vector for the line, similar to the abc that we saw for the plane. It gives us the information in terms of how this is oriented, whether we draw a vector in that direction or in this direction. And then t is what we call the parameter. And what that allows you to do is specify a value for t, which essentially will offset from this point, x0, y0, z0, by t times the direction in travel. What are we doing with that t? Let's back up for a moment to where we took our unit vector and multiplied it by a scalar. So in the context that we were just talking about, we are going to use t as the scalar here, u is going to correspond to the f, g, and h. And now I can calculate a point on the line, v, at any location as I vary the value of t. And so t, if it's a line, can go from negative infinity to positive infinity. Obviously, as you can see here, you recognize that when t is equal to 0, In that case, this term goes away, and we will be at the point x0, y0, z0. And then as t increments positive direction, we move in one direction on the line. Opposite direction, we uh, move in a negative direction. OK, well, we've already seen that plane before. 
we recognize that, that the direction vector for the plane is made up of A, B, and C, and that D tells us something about how far the plane is from the origin. So our parametric line, again, gives us this notion of moving up and down a line. And if I look at my x0, y0, z0, and offset it by h, then t is going to be equal to 1. So in this case, I'm varying my point between t0 and t is equal to 1. Now you can pick the values for fg and h such that if you want to do a line segment, such as this, you can select that so that a specific location on the line corresponds to t is equal to 1 by changing the magnitude of f, g, and h. Don't forget, f, g, and h is the direction vector of the line. So if we're trying to uh, fit a soft gauge, for instance, if the line corresponds to the axis of a cylinder, what we'll be doing is solving for f, g, and h and x0, y0, z0. With these six parameters, we know exactly where that axis is. And then we can compare that axis to a tolerance zone, for instance, location, angularity, straightness, whatever the uh, tolerance specification is. Note any location on the line is determined through changing the value of parameter t. So if I need to go to a specific location, such as uh, an origin or uh, where two datums intersect, I can vary the value of t. And if I go in a negative direction, it'll take me uh, in one direction here, go in a positive direction, it'll take me in the opposite direction. So at this stage, we have the basics of uh, what we are going to need for a soft gauge. Notice that based upon the concept of unit direction vector, I can normalize f, g, and h. And we typically do that because it makes a lot of the operations much simpler. So if I have some initial value for f, g, and h, as you can see here, all I'm going to do is divide through by the distance as we defined before. And now I have a normalized direction vector. For the plane, we saw that the orientation of the plane is governed by a, b, and c. The shortest distance to the origin will be determined by D when it's normalized. And so we'll be determining A, B, C, and D in order to determine the location of a surface. In normalizing the plane, we again find the unit vector for A, B, and C, and then we can also normalize D as well. So we end up with a unit vector on A, B, and C, which is a direction vector. Key concepts that you should take away from this, if you're a little rusty, you might want to go back and review them, is what is a vector? What's the difference between just any vector and a unit vector? What the information does a dot product provide? What is the result of a cross product of two vectors? How do we describe a line in terms of a parametric line? And then for an implicit plane, what are the parameters and what do they tell you about that plane? Finally, how do we go about normalizing either a line or a plane? We're going to use these basic elements, point, line, and plane, in the process of constructing our soft gauge. And in order to be able to do that, you need to be able to find, first of all, the location of a point, which is readily available from its coordinate the location and orientation of the line, which we saw by using a point on the line as well as a direction vector, and then the location and orientation of a plane, which is based on its parameters A, B, C, and D.